Good evening and welcome to the stream of uh, this, the group stages of the Jetto Cup. And thank you for watching. And hello for those of you joining us. Uh, good evening. This is Charles, uh, your Hi. caster for today. You're now watching uh, the group stages of the Jetto Cup. So we have the two teams, Null Victory versus Paradise. And it's now Null's, Null Victory's first turn to pick. And they have the dire side. And uh, some backgrounds on the teams for those of you tuning in right now. Null Victory actually has a 50-50 win rate with two wins, two wins and two losses. While Paradise actually has a 100% win rate for now. But that's only because they played one game so far. At least according to the records. Uh, if you want more details on this Jetto Cup, you can check out our the Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com slash Jetto Cup. Or the Tumblr page. Uh, friendlydota.tumblr.com So now we have actually some relatively quick bans. Null Victory bans the Batrider, uh, usually an offlaner mid. And they also ban the Slark, a uh, very potent mid. I, I think uh, they might go for the OD. Usually Slark is actually does quite well against the OD, who's usually picking mid. While Paradise bans the Dark Seer. Uh, very powerful offlaner can turn around the game with this vacuum wall combo, and they also ban the alchemist, who who usually plays a carry. So we're talking about the mid hero, and null victory null victory already reveals their hand by picking the outworld Devo devourer. He usually tends to win mid lane, and usually there are only a few heroes who does well against him. And as I said before, uh, the Slark is one of them, which explains their ban. Now Paradise has two quick uh, picks, the Jakiro and the Lone Druid. Now the Jakiro is actually uh, su support, very potent. He has long range uh, anti-initiation skill with the Ice Path or that can also stun the enemy if there's uh, enough setup from other heroes. While the Lone Druid is of uh, a very flexible carry, you can see him sometimes leaning on the safe lane, sometimes on the off lane. Uh, I mean, with that, he can use his bear to pull creeps, and remaining. and more rarely he can actually go mid. And you know, he's actually one of the heroes that does well against the Outworld Devourer. So I like this slapping by the Paradise. I think yeah, your Lone Druid is very flexible in slaying. You don't know if he's the hero that's going up against the OD. So now it's a uh, Null's victory's turn to pick. Uh, they pick the Chen. This is usually uh. Played as a support, uh, well, a jungling support at that. And what's nice about him is he has great pushing presence uh, early on, thanks to the power of his creeps. I mean, yeah, Chen is er early game. He's at, it's when he's most powerful because that's when your your the creeps uh you dominate are most effective. Uh, late late game he always has his heal. But uh, don't like. But the other problem with that is also he won't be in lane and instead will be jungling. So, if the en opposing team goes for an aggressive try lane, there's this opportunity to bank on that. So another set of quick bans here. Null victory bans the warlock. Usually pick because of his ultimate and of course uh during the lane, the laning stages he has a heal. Uh, Paradise bans the rubik, a very flexible uh support, and. Looking at their uh, their well, right now there doesn't seem to be a lot of spells that Rubik might steal from Team Paradise's side. Right now, it's just really the Jakiro with his dual breath. While well, Null Victory now uh bans the Silencer. So Silencer, uh, as his name implies, is a silence ability, which is his ultimate, which uh lets you uh prevents any from casting spells during this this period. Uh, usually. He's played as a support, but he can also go mid. And speaking of those flexible supports that could go mid, Paradise also bans the the Nyx. Uh, the Nyx Assassin, uh, he, he, uh, once he reaches his level 6, he has Vendetta, which lets him start gank ganking uh, either the lone supports or even v vulnerable heroes out alone. And for that reason, you, you sometimes want him in mid so that he can gain those early levels. Or you can also have him as a support since he also has a short range uh, stun with uh, Impale. Uh, well, it's short range at level 1. Later on, hopefully, as you gain more levels, it the range extends. And you can even farm up a Blink Dagger, assuming uh, 
he has a high amount of farm. So now it's the pick phase. I think uh, both teams will look to pick their their other supports, especially considering all all those bands. I mean, uh, yeah, the third and fourth band of both teams were support heroes. So well, the thing about support is there's a lot. They have lots of flexibility. They can still go, for example, for the Crystal Maiden. She has a reliable stun. We've seen also she paired up with the Jakiro, the the Torrent Chief. That the yeah the the Torrent Chief then. So uh, that those are two long range uh, initiation skills. Uh, perhaps out of vogue right now is the is the Shadow Demon usually. With his uh with his skill, he can set up combinations with the Jakiro. Uh, can there's also the Leshrac. Oh, yeah, although as you said before, we haven't seen much of him uh lately. I've seen I've seen even some teams draft the Witch Doctor. Uh, he has a stun. It it's not that reliable. Uh, or since there lo there's a lone druid, they might actually even go for an Augur Magi. Uh, that his uh, boost to attack speed on the lone druid bear is very very good, but instead uh, Paradise picks up the troll warlord. Troll warlord. Troll war warlord. Sorry, the troll warlord is a very flexible hero. I mean, we've seen him go mid as well, but he can also play the carry role. And with his uh, battle trance, he can boost everyone's uh, attack speed, and I think that's very valuable. With somebody like the Lone Druid. So another quick uh, support pick there. So they go with the Lina. And the opposing team uh, picks the Keeper of the Light. Uh, Keeper of the Light and the Phantom Lancer. Those are usually two two combos. I mean the Keeper of the Light defense. While the Phantom Lancer pushes. And the Keeper of the Light can always r recall the... The Phantom Lancer, if he needs to be in fights. While the Lina, you know, that's a stun. Uh, Ice Pat into a. Yeah, like uh, Ice Pat into Dragon Slave can set up a very powerful ag aggressive tri lane. Uh, that's assuming they g get their combinations right. So now we have their f our fi fifth bands. So Paradise bans the Weaver. Weaver's actually a very elusive uh, off laner, uh, and the, because you ha your support heroes don't have immediate stuns, it might be difficult to ca catch him. And now I guess, uh, yeah, null victory. I'm, I am, I don't think they're yet. Uh, they're sure what the laning of Paradise is. I mean, the lone druid can still go mid. The troll world can be the hard carry, and perhaps. They're looking for uh, Paradise is now looking for an off lane. Although with Jakiro and Lina, they could actually go for an aggressive tri lane. Uh, usually, a life stealer would might be a good ban now. So instead, they ban the mid hero, uh, the Pock. I'm not so sure about this is a good idea. I mean, if the their outworld devour is actually the one in the mid, uh, he should usually win uh, against the Pock. So now Paradise uh goes for their off laner, uh, a bounty hunter. Not exactly the not exactly the the strongest of uh well I mean it's not the strongest hero in when part of an aggressive tri lane so this uh signals to me that this is actually gonna be a safe uh safe lane tri lane with the bounty hunter going the off lane I mean he just needs levels uh, especially with his uh ability to go shadow walk and then. Once he reaches level six, he wants to participate in team fights and keep uh, tracking the enemy. And I think this is also a good counter to Phantom Lancer. Once you track him, when he uses his doppel walk, you'll know which one is the real one. And I guess this is all about early aggression, and that's one way to punish the Phantom Lancer. And I think Null's victory strategy here is a bit uh, revealed early on. Although if they can hang on, I think uh, this is still a powerful lineup. So. Null Victory now p picks up their uh, off laner, the Windrunner. She's actually, uh, the question really is now uh, how the plans of both teams will go. 
So now let me introduce the teams. We have uh, Rainman on the Lone Druid, uh, Demand Red on the Troll Warlord, Rav on the Jakiro, Pendragon on the Bounty Hunter, and Martin Pandu on the Lina. And that's for the Radiant side. On the Dire side, we have Sushi on the Outworld Devourer, Shopao on the Keeper of the Light, hmm. Suman on the Windrunner, hmm. Who else? Shawarma on the Chen and Shark Swin on the Phantom Lancer. So we have a uh, very food related uh, name names there. So looks like there's a pause as as there's a uh, team members looking to reconnect. So again, if you're watching, uh, thank thanks for watching the Jetto Cup. We actually have two games uh, going on right now, and you might want to check the stream there at uh, twitch.tv slash vaniroos. And this is uh, Charles. Actually, my Twitch is uh, twitch.tv slash Charles A Tan. Uh, the problem is usually I get disconnected 20 minutes into the recording. Uh, mainly because I'm activating this delay server but you can also check out uh, my YouTube it's youtube.com slash Charles Atan and if the recording goes well usually I upload the videos there and if you're interested more about the Jetto Cup you can actually go to our Facebook page the facebook.com slash Jetto Cup or uh, check out the Tumblr friendlydota.tumblr.com So for those of you watching the stream, I've just turned on the overlays, and I hope it's not too big of an inconvenience. And now uh, we're we see uh, the game has been on pause, and there's a quick uh, smoke purchase there by Dalina. And and now let's uh, well both teams are protecting their their jungle and uh, potent ward placement. Seconds to battle. So dire wards there, wards their side of the river, and I'm checking if uh, Radiant's looking to do the same. Looks like this Windrun is already on position to snag the rune in case it's sp it spawns bottom. And as for laning, as for the laning, it's as we predicted. Uh, safe lane, tri lane uh, on the Radiant, and that goes uh, as well as for the dire. And I think you know. If they actually went on aggressive tri lane, they might e could they could uh, really punish this, uh, the dire because they only have a phantom lancer and only the keeper of the light to guard because uh, this Chen is actually should be jungling. Now we're going mid. Uh, the lone druid, you know, one of the heroes that actually might do well, assuming equal player skill against the o od, and uh, competent creep back from both, so there's no real advantage. And then now they're pinging on top. Uh, looks like the bounty hunter warded the dire uh, creep camp, so creeps won't be spawning there. I wonder if dire w dire will be the warding. The other spot actually to ward there would be here. And yes, and now it's only now that they realize that th their camp has been warded. And uh, this windrunner will now just uh, apply pressure here, but. Uh, She's not really getting caught out, and actually she's getting she's well within XP range. She's actually three fourths into her, I uh, know, into her level two. And the bounty hunter is actually level two now, so there's X XP. The bounty hunter in the slight lead, and if if we're looking at the CS charts, it's actually the Phantom Lancer in the lead. Uh, the the bounty hunter can't really harass him, especially with the Keeper of the Light there. While well, in terms of mid, it's actually the lone druid who's, who's winning it, which uh, is uh, providing some problems for the OD. I mean, the OD only has uh, two last hits, and the lone druid actually has three times the denies as the OD has last hits. Or well, now now just twice. Uh, actually, the actually nice de leveling there by the lone druid. He actually has more more denies than last hits uh, with the six to eight score. But uh, going for the dire right now is this Phantom Lancer is getting some 
farm. Uh, he's the best farmer right now. Nine, nine hits and uh, nine last hits and um, one deny. And look, looks like they're looking to push his tower. The Chen actually rotates in with his uh, single Hell Bear Smasher, and he's level two. And yeah, I think they just wanna break this uh, tower. So this is actually a peculiar setup. Normally, when you have the Phantom Lancer, you're looking to prolong the game. And actually, if you look at the actual st statistics at Dota buff, the the Phantom Lancer's win rate increases uh, if the game goes for more than 45 minutes. And there's another pause uh, due to the lag. Now the thing about the Phantom Lancer, uh, normally the best way to defeat them is to apply early pressure. Uh, usually you do that by taking towers early so that they lose map control. But in this case, it's actually the Phantom Lancer's team was applying a lot of pressure. And looks like the Windrun is actually getting some 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 farm and some XP. And this Bounty Hunter, yeah, it's already level 3 compared to Windrunner's uh, level 2. So b both la offlaners are doing well. And at, at mid, uh, this OD finally snags a double damage rune, but he's still very behind in terms of last hits. It's compared to the Lone Druid. And I think what's going well right now for the Radiant is... Uh, is is this is an is despite this despite this uh tier one treasure okay and they're making a go at this bounty hunter but he uses uh, invisibility in time and there's a blast from the cot the keeper of the light but uh, the misses the bounty hunter so he survives and actually quite a uh, high level now at at level four but uh they successfully he successfully actually defends this tier one tower so it's actually right now uh. Dire applying tower pressure, but in their favor, it's their heroes that's getting a lot of farm. Uh, I mean, the Troll Warlord now out C has a higher CS than the Phantom Lancer, and more denies at that, and that's also the case with the Lone Druid. So the the Chen now just goes back to farming, and actually they they reward this creep pull, a uh, nice sentry drop there. And actually, they also put one in the lane, so that it will be more difficult now for the bounty hunter to to get into XP range. And yeah, I think this one sees him. And uh, yeah, no, the, they could have troll trap him, uh, but they they choose not to. Uh, uh, that's just fine. So yeah, so now they catch him again in XP ra in the sentry's range, but he quickly gets out. So that should be a signal to him that uh, they, they, they know uh, there's a sentry ward, sentry ward there. Then looking out at bottom, the Windrunner snags level 3. Um, and the Radiant supports are just uh, pulling here. So the OD snags a haste rune, but he's really behind right now on, in, on terms of, of levels. Uh, barely reaching level 5 while the Lone Druid is halfway to level 5 already. So now Dyer again uh, applying more pressure on this tower and this bounty hunter uh, Nice play there. He actually gets the Deny but uh, sorry, I missed that uh, Radiant on the other hand gets a first blood on the Windrunner So yeah with the troll warlord there and the Jakiro and the Lina that's a lot of uh, Well the two have disables while the troll warlord troll warlord will have a uh, his whirling axis, either in the melee and range form. So actually, uh, despite that tower loss by the Radiant, I think uh, they're ahead. I mean, their bounty hunter took a risky move to deny the tower, but he got it. And he didn't lose his life. And Radiant, on the other hand, managed to get a uh, f first blood. So now Dyer uh, is making rotation, giving uh, this Keeper of the Light more XP. And the question really is... Uh, their OD. Okay, actually, it seems that uh, Radiant got another kill on the OD as well. Uh, sorry for missing that. Probably a lucky entangle from the Lone Druid, who's now level 7. And this OD is just level 5. So you see the level difference there making a big difference. So again, despite losing the top tower, uh, Ra Radiant uh, managed to snag two Im important early game kills. And uh, their Phantom Lancer now just goes back to farming. 
So actually, let's look now at the charts and the XP. We have actually uh, the radiant, yeah, and that's you know the two hero kills and the lo lots of denies by the this lone druid. And in terms of gold, uh, you know, despite the early tower loss, uh, it's it's still radiant who's in the lead, a thousand. Not it's not it's not that big, but it's right. It's it's a competent advantage at this stage in the game at seven minutes in. So now the OD uh, Asalan prisons the lone druid. Uh, and looks like uh, they're look he's looking for a lucky entangle on this uh, outworld devourer, but uh, it doesn't come. And now this bounty hunter is looking to disrupt disrupt this creep pool. Uh, I think he might hunt the Chen, but the, the creeps are nearby. So what he's doing? Do yes, he goes there. Uh, Jenai the strike, a track, a hit, hit, but he doesn't have a shuriken toss, and Chen is hugging the tower too close. So uh, there won't be follow up. However, this Chen should be very, very careful, and they drop a ward. So and the bounty hunter actually was barely in range, but now they they spot him, and that should be a signal to him that there's a sentry ward there. And then mid, yeah, they banish the lone druid, and the keeper of the light rotates there, but uh, they can't really make a go at him. This this bear is uh, getting low on life, but the lone druid still has his summon spirit bear. And uh, in terms of farm, yeah, the troll warlord has finally caught up to the phantom lancer. With 43 assets and 24 denies, and that's in addition to the first blood. And you look at Nethward, uh despite all those uh, creep kills, it's the Phantom Lancers actually in the lead. It's actually farm up a hand of Midas. So we're going to see some. Uh, well, his farm should accelerate. And at mid, this lone is making a go at the Outworld Devourer. Uh, Outworld Devourer throws his ulti, but uh, doesn't. Uh, Get it. However, the Lina loses her life in the process, uh, but still not a bad trade. Uh, a support for the OD, and the thing there is they killed the the mid hero before the support died. So at least uh, uh, Radiant supports are getting some XP. So again, we're talking about accelerated farming. This this Phantom Lancer uh, will will soar up in terms of levels and uh, gold, especially with the Sand of Midas. And since no one's really contesting him right now. So he'll he'll be uh, annoying in the late game, but the thing here is, you, you, with this hand of Midas pick up, we don't expect really him to fight until the until like 20 or 30 minutes in. So there's just some harassment on the bounty hunter, which they should do. But he can doesn't just free farm. He was hit by Jinada in the track, but uh, he he knows there's no follow up. And then on mid, looks like uh, the support from both teams are gathering here. Uh, the OD and the Keeper of the Light and is looking to push, but uh, Jakiro comes in, nice ice pad, catches the Outworld Devourer and an entangle by the Lone Druid Bear, and that's a dead uh, Outworld Devourer. And, and you know, the Chen and the uh, Keeper of the Light can do nothing but stand back. So, uh, Sentry Ward is, is dropped uh, on, on mid, actually that's by the, that's by the Dyer. And... And the uh, Lina picks up a uh, an illusion rune and she just just uses that to scout, and the regeneration uh, spawns and she acquires it. And again, it's and again it's looking very grim for for the for the dire. But the thing there is if they can hang on the game for like ten to twenty minutes and buy space for their phantom dancer, this is he's actually one of the harder carries in the game and it's very annoying to deal with. Uh, thankfully, Radiant has actually some AOE spells with the Jakiro and the Lina, but but the this Phantom Lancer will still be a big problem uh, if uh, if he's given enough space. And I think that's m what's happening here, especially with uh, all these fights concentrated on mid. No one's really harassing the the Phantom Lancer. And I, and I think now the question really is uh, for Radiant: What is this bounty hunter doing? There's no not much track kills going on. He's not really tracking the enemy. So up wasted chan chance there, and he could actually, if he goes in the jungle, he might uh, he could easily actually hunt this uh, Chen. And on the side of the radiant uh, at bottom, th this Windrunner is getting so much needed levels, but uh, she's actually level four. So after that death, she's she's just forced to stand back, unlike this uh, bounty hunter who's twice her level at, at level eight. And uh, but this uh, this uh, troll warlord is getting some farm. Already has his. Uh, Helm of Dominator and some 1,000 
700 gold in the bank. Perhaps a weakness there is his boots. I'm not yet sure what kind of boots he's looking to build. But usually power threads, face boots, or even the expensive boots of travel are very good items to pick up. While this Phantom Lancer is just uh, getting more free farm. Okay, there's a smoke gang here by the bounty hunter and, and Delina, and they'll spot this Phantom Lancer. So Jinaida and Atrak, I think, will do the trick. But no, uh, they miss it, and and that's that. Phantom Lancer managed to escape. Uh, Radiant expends a a smoke without getting much out of it. So I think that that's a victory there for the Dire. So now battle mid Atrak on the Outworld Devourer. And he quickly dies to the combined might of the Lina and Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter and Lone Druid. So nice play there. Uh, th th that's track golden three heroes and and nice uh, shackle there, catching the Lone Druid and his bear. But there's no follow up damage, so both escapes. So this uh, Bounty Hunter retreats so with with low with low life. But I think yeah, he he got some gold there, and this Sentry Ward the Twin is proving to be annoyance to him, but it's doing its job. And Radiant hangs on to their towers, despite this uh, aggressive lineup. And Phantom Lancer is now looking to find some farm. So looking at bottom, this Keeper of the Light is here, and he'll join the Windrunner. And the question really is now, is this one Windrunner? She needs to get, get some levels, and it was nice shackle shot earlier, but she's just level 5. And now uh, we're looking at this uh, mid lone druid. Watch is what is his item progression? Still just a stout shield on the bear, and I think he's ha looking for a radiance. And you know he already has three thousand seven six hundred gold there, so just needs uh one hundred fifty before he gets the sacred relic, and then perhaps like four or five more minutes to farm up that radiance. But but the thing there is when you farm up a radiance, you won't be pushing that early on although it's a good uh, item actually on, on the lone druid because it's actually a very damaging item the problem with getting an early radiance as a farm item is that uh, the he the heroes at, at early levels don't ten don't tend to have a mu much HP so their presence in team fights isn't that long but the lone druid is actually one of the tougher heroes out there so him dealing radiance damage to the opposing team is actually quite significant since he'll tend to survive especially if he's not focused early on so now uh, there was a fight here at bottom and the troll warlord hunts down a vulnerable uh, windrunner and that's perhaps one of the reasons why she's not get getting the levels and now uh, at mid yeah the OD and the keeper of the light just content to push this creep wave but uh, together with the Chen and there's actually an invisible Jakiro here and they drop a sentry ward and they spot him and no so this Jakiro will just defend while I think uh, at bottom this lone druid and troll warlord can push I mean with the troll warlord in it battle trance together with the despair can take down tower and actually a glyph is used while while Dyer just looks to push mid with this uh, Chen so ice path there by the Jakiro he pops his ulti but uh, so far there's not enough damage this Chen is very very low but his uh, centaur saves him so now the bounty hunter tracks the phantom lancer together with the Lina. it's a very important kill it prevents the, the farm from below and uh, on at bottom there's a rotation here by the OD with the windrunner uh, but but does translate into any kills and the lone druid uh, joins them so you have this uh, four Actually, four heroes here on the side of the Radiant, and I think this is a very v vulnerable OD. He needs to TP out of there. If, if they make a go at him, uh, there's not much that can save his life, but they're a shackle, but it doesn't uh, latch onto anyone, and the Keeper of the Light. Uh, okay, so he just blasts. There's a Cuttle Blast. Again, uh, we're talking about this, this track kill on the Phantom Lancer. I think that's what you need to do. Uh, d delay his uh, items as as long as possible but he's actually getting the diffusal blade soon he's just missing uh the the his uh in int item the robe then uh at, at bottom this is where the the next clash seems to be actually what's going uh in favor right now of the dire is that they, they've still hung on to their towers it's already 16 minutes in so none of their tier 1 towers have have fallen and that's despite a lineup with the lone druid and a troll warlord and in fact, they're the ones with the tower lead. 
So successful defense there so far. And the uh, PL actually rotates mid, but the bounty hunter is there. So he's, he's forced off the lane. And uh, looks like this top tower by the Dyers is still very much up. And, and now there's a teleport by the OD back uh, into mid. So looking here, uh, the Radiant actually sent that spread out. They're more or less gathered uh, at bottom. And actually the Lone Druid uh, rotates to farm the neutral creeps while this bounty hunter is just uh, tracking the OD, making sure uh, he stays it within vision. And I think he's now looking to hunt the Phantom Lancer again. So actually uh, now at level 11 and has the highest net worth uh, in the game right now. So despite this big situation for the Dire, they're still hanging on and this Phantom Lancer is a ticking time bomb. Perhaps the only saving grace right now for the Radiant in terms of late games, you have the Lone Druid, who's the arguably the hardest of carries. I mean, he, he has uh, 12 slots and looking at... Uh, at top, looks like this uh, bounty hunter spots the well the phantom lancer illusions, and he could actually made the shot this courier, but they know he won't get it. Instead, this PL is hunting the Lina. Does she have his diffusal blade? Yes, he has his diffusal blade, and nice stun there by the Lina to buy her some time. And uh, the phantom lancer is unaware that the bounty hunter is behind him, and there, th there's a hit. Uh, the the PL gets the kill action the Lina, but loses his life, and that's some tra track money going to the bounty hunter. So n nice player by the bounty hunter. I mean the PL was was farming. He does get some reliable gold from that Lina kill, but he still lost uh, some money there. And uh, more importantly, that's 30 seconds that he won't be in the game. So that's a lot of of, of far farm lost. So shackle shot. So fight here going bottom, and the lone druid gets a kill on the wind runner, and he's making a go at the keep of the light, and that radiant's doing its radiant's burn. Uh, the Lone Druid loses his bear. Uh, there's a resummon, and now they're looking to. I don't know wh why they're here. Uh, there's a banish by the by the OD, but uh, they don't get killed. I think they get, should just push this tower, which is low on life. And actually, Radiant loses their mid tower while that was happening, probably due to Chen. And this Lone Druid uh, still here, uh, f facing both the OD and the Windrunner, but. Uh, Looks like this bear is safe and just content to ha hang on there. So now looking at the item progression, this Troll Warlord is looking to get that BKB and once he gets that, I think uh, the, the heroes... Okay, so uh, on, on top, this uh, stock bounty hunter spots this Chen. It's just a matter of time when he'll go for Jinaida, track. So there, one Jinaida, a track, second hit, thir third right click, a heal. Uh, and then the bounty hunter backs off as the Chen starts to hug his tower. So Dyer's middle tower uh, falls down because of the lone druid, Jakiro and Lina. And the Keeper of the Light couldn't really defend it. And this Phantom Lancer is actually going for a top push again. And uh, he still has his uh, Diffusal Blade, which is level 1. and has 1,000 gold in the bank. And uh, this bounty hunter is already just harassing the... The Chen, who's now forced to hang behind his tower, but he'll also find this uh, Phantom Lancer. So the Lina there, uh, ni nice stun, but she's already low on life due to the PL damage. And actually, they get a kill on the Chen, and uh, and the Lina dies, but uh, they have some track there. And nice ice pad to the keep the light. I think will soon die. And uh, so there's another track gold death. They pop off uh, dust, and this Lone Druid is hunting this Windrunner. One hit. To then dies by the Radiance, and it's just this PL who's, who's still here. So that's three kills on the side of the Radiant while only losing one of one of their supports. Yeah. So that and you know that that's one of their cores was the Windrunner, and this PL couldn't farm during the entire time. So definitely win there while this uh. Was, this Troll Warrior actually hasn't been participating in much fights except those kills on the Windrunner. So now he's f facing the OD, uh, and. Just an astral imprisonment there by the OD before he flees again, and he just farms this at tower. So now we have uh, this bounty hunter looking to harass the dire side. He's actually kept the Phantom Lancer tracked, but but the Chen rotates in and drops the sentry ward, so that chases him off. But the thing there is, this PL is forced to go home uh, and heal, and he's really not finding farm right now. So he has his Diffusal Blade, which is very good, but anything else, uh. 
so doesn't have much items actually right now uh if he wants to fight he might go for manta but option also is the heart so that is issues are very tough so now the lord is pushing but the phantom lancer rotates in now uh, delina rotates in nice stun and some lucky roots there and gets a kill on the phantom lancer so shackle shot there by the wind runner catches the bear but uh Lina, Lina's, uh laguna blade actually kills the keeper of the light and now the both this Chen is forced to run back, but an entangle and radiance, and he dies. So they might actually go against this one run as well. But her shackle shot uh, ties up both the bear and and the lone druid. And, but now the Odi comes in, and it's in no man's land. So this uh, bear is coming in, and some body blocks and preemptive ulti by the Jakiro, and they get the kill. So, so in four, four, four kills there by the radiant, uncontested. Easiest money. The only thing better could have been a it track gold from the bounty hunter but he was a bit far off now i think they get, but you know kill is a kill and i think they j just want looking to push this uh tier one tower and during that time i think the troll warlord break break broke this tier two ta bottom tower by the dire and you know when you're fighting uh pl that's what you want to do it's just 22 minutes into the game and you're you already have 17 kills with only three dead so that's going well for you and that's what you need uh, b because you know, uh, okay, so now this is the break the Dire needs. They find the Lone Druid in No Man's Land, and that's uh, three or four heroes there. So one more hit by the PL. It's even the PL who gets the gold, and th that's bonus gold there. Uh, but the but the bounty hunter gets a kill on the Keeper of the Light, but he might lose his life here. So yeah. And we're talking about the comeback from Dire, and that's what they're getting right now. Uh, aside from the death by the Lone Druid, that was a 900. 30 gold bonus going to the Phantom Lancer and another 400 bonus gold due to the streak again of the Bounty Hunter so that's easily halfway through the PL's uh, heart if that's what he's getting uh, what is his gold right now 3200 yeah so he can buy the Reaver if that's what he chooses to do so and uh, I think yeah, they're they're slowly catching up with those two deaths. Those were two big deaths. We're talking about killing th the cores, and yeah, the the only one hero who hasn't died yet probably is the troll warlord. But uh, the, your lone druid and your bounty hunter are your key heroes right now. If in the radiant, if you look in the XP chart, still very much in the sa side of the radiant. But if we look at the gold, uh, actually, well stabilized there, fifteen thousand gold lead. But it, it won't necessarily be a, a lot when you're facing the the PL, or at least the threat of the PL. So now, uh, Dyer's looking to push this tier 1 bottom tower, and Agilf is pushed. And nice shackle shot there, and they're making go to the Jakiro, and he quickly evaporates to the might of the this uh, this push. But the troll, troll warlord comes in, but is, is, it, is it the best? Yeah, there's uh, the bounty hunter was there, and uh, Radiant immediately gets two kills. Thanks to the Lina there, and the bounty hunter. So now they're making a go. Uh, they actually lose the tr the troll warlord to the OD, but this bounty hunter is now hunting this uh the OD. Uh, bounty hunter should track. Is there a track? Uh, there a track and a kill by the lone druid bear. But at the bottom there's this uh phantom lancer who gets a kill on the Lina. And it, uh, let's see if uh the bounty hunter and the uh, no, can track. Yeah, they no they go they, instead. Uh, the bounty hunter just tracks the illusion, and this PL is get lo looks like he's getting away. And actually, he has four thousand gold in the bank. I don't know what his next item will be. Why he doesn't buy his next items? Whether it's a Reaver or that Manta style. Uh, I don't think he's going for a Radiant. Let's look at uh this item. Yeah, the courier not yet buying anything. So looks like the Radiant's uh, rotating into the secret shop. And now uh, this bounty hunter finds this uh, windrunner. So hit, deny the hit, attract, and uh, burned by the lone druid. So easy money there, and that was uh, three heroes. So that's actually uh, where a lot of the gold is coming from, with that participation of the bounty hunter during those team fights. And there's an invisibility by the bounty hunter, but I think that's in front of a sentry ward. So now I think he might look to spot the Phantom Lancer. Instead, finds the Chen. So Jinaida, track, hit, hit, hit. I think this Hellbear's and a Shuriken toss. So that's a kill. 
the PL comes in too late. He just throws a lance, uh, burning actually the mana. And now, uh, but the uh, bounty hunter is survives. So now Radiant's going for for this Roshan, and with this troll warlord, it's actually a quick fight. I mean, he has his face boots, a helm of the dominator. And now, if you're looking at the net worth, you know the load druid is actually in the lead with the phantom lancer second, and the other cores of the radiant uh, following the bounty hunter and the troll warlord. And let's look at the items of the lone druid. What does he have? Well, the question is where's his bear? So there's his bear. Right, he has an assault cuirass. And then, uh, so v this is very powerful lineup. I'm not sure yet though if they can push this tier three towers. Instead, they, uh, the Jakiro goes for this tier two top tower, and I don't think uh, they can defend. It. Uh, the Troll Warlord actually finds a a PL and a timely heal there. Uh, but uh, the PL nonetheless dies to the Luna ulti. So now the Troll Warlord actually catches this OD. So he might die. One, two, yeah, and gets the kill. And this ice bat doesn't hit anyone, but they get the kill nonetheless. And making go at, at this Windrunner. So that, yeah, that's a triple kill. And those are, yeah, I think that's all three cores of the Dire. And this is what Radiant needs to do. And they can uh, break the, down this tower. I mean, you have this lone druid and troll warlord. So I, this tier two tower doesn't have long to live. And they can actually damage uh, this... Uh, Tier 3 tower. Their saving grace is they still have Keeper of the Light, which is very good at defense. One thing here is you just need to kill the creeps. But then again, this uh, Lone Druid bear is very, very tough. So now, yeah, they kill the creeps immediately, and this bear quickly demolishes this uh, tower. Well, it's it's still up, uh, uh, but the gulp is pop, and Troll Warlord uses his ulti. And I think, yeah, Radiant should back off now. This lean is very low in life, and the PL will be respawning soon. And look at this uh, support smelt uh, due to the Radiant's burn by the Spirit Bear. But uh, So there's actually disconnection by the Lone Druid. So we have another pause. So nice play there by the Radiant getting 3 kills on the course of of the Dire. And let's look at the items. Yeah, uh, the PL actually gets the Radiant. So that was why he was saving that 4,000 gold. I don't think this is a good item pick up. Uh, I think with Radiance is you need to be tough so that you can use it in team fights for a prolonged period. And this is a PL actually with the Hand of Midas and Hand of Midas is one of his items, so it's very very fragile, just 1,100 life. So he can easily die, especially to like a Laguna Blade by the Lina. Lina actually has a level two Laguna Blade, so it's dealing 675 damage. Uh, I think this yeah this is a bad pickup. Normally you get the Radiance. To, to farm and then the PL you know you have Hand of Midas you don't need the Radiance it's, it's either one of the two uh, to very very greedy build uh, on him I think they could start winning team fights if he got uh, another item maybe level 2 Diffuse Blade plus Manta style or even a heart but he's, since he has neither he's really gonna die to the burst damage from the Radiant I mean j it's just uh, Jinaida and track and this bounty hunter actually has a lot of damage uh, he already has his uh, desolator so he wanders the middle and there's a sentry ward there so the creep spot him so that should be an indicator to him and the keeper of the light just stuns him and blinds him but looks like this uh, bounty hunter will escape although he's low on mana but sp speaking of Speaking uh, of this bounty hunter, he actually has a battle fury. I, I I don't like the battle fury because again it's another farming farming item, and as a bounty hunter, your farm should be issuing from track. But it it's non a uh, damage item nonetheless, and it helps with this mana rege regeneration. So it's not that bad, especially since they are dominating this game. I mean, yeah, radiant is radiant uh is leading by more than twenty five thousand XP, and in terms of the gold, yeah, they're also having that much and it's and this uh od mid he usually wins mid lane but he's be a non-factor right now i mean he barely has enough gold for the mechanism in fact he's only g getting the headdress now and was, uh forced to get an early four staff but the problem is uh if you're looking at hero levels yeah i mean uh the the Look, this Jakiro is a support. He's three levels higher than the Windrunner, which is an offlaner. And actually, this Jakiro has as much levels as the Outworld Devourer. So when your support has as much XP as your mid, 
you're really in a very very bad situation the only saving grace is this phantom lancer's at top of the chart as well at level 17 but that's mo mostly due to the hand of midas uh xxp and again uh this is a very greedy build by the dyer's phantom lancer uh Normally, when you get a hand of Midas, you really want your next item to be a very potent uh, item for team fights, uh, not a radiant. <laughs> then, looking at at the other cores of the radiant, well, the lone druid finally has his, the bear finally has his skull basher. Yeah, let's look at the net worth. Yeah, and then let's see what the troll warlord has. He should have his BKB by now. Yes, he has a BKB. And in fact, is uh, just one item away from his butterfly, so that would help in his defense. And uh, and then looks like they still have the ages, so they could make a go for another push. But they don't have to rush it. They still have three minutes on that uh, ages. And now the heroes are gathered mid. Dyer is looking just to defend their tier three mid tower, while Radiant's looking to push the tier three top tower. And look at this warding. Whereas both sides had equal wards before, now you have some aggressive wards by by the radiant and and because of the Im threat of invisibility by the bounty hunter dire support is for forced to buy uh spend a lot of their gold on their sentries on sentry wards and when you're on behind you know it's really a uh, money sink but uh, they have no choice they really have to do it if they don't want to get caught un unaware and I think, yeah, it's the Bounty Hunters being the MVP right now in this game. So, nice shackle shot there, catches the Troll Warlord and the Lone with Bear. But now they're making a go at the racks, while the Bear is actually hunting the heroes. Uh, but I think they should just focus on their objective, uh, which is this racks. So, yeah, the melee, top melee racks falls down, nice shackle shot there. And this uh, Phantom Lancer is actually causing some trouble. But they get a kill, kill on the chain by the Lone Druid. A lucky entangle there. And now they're chasing this Keeper of the Light. So the Radiance Burn is doing some damage. Uh, there's a counter kill here by uh, the OD on the Jakiro, but he might lose his life. So he actually manages to force up at the last minute. Now they're catching this uh, this PL. Yes, and uh, they get a kill. So that's four heroes for just one support. And I think th this is game. So Radiance can just push the uh, break this uh, range rack so that they get that and then this bounty hunter actually broke the mid tier 3 tower and is going for this uh melee barracks and the radiant supports are uh heroes are rotating in there so they break the melee barracks and this is also a uh, dead range racks so uh i'm not sure if they can go for this tier 4 i mean the dyer's heroes are spawning in no, no pl but uh radiant slow on life uh, there's a Astronaut Prismant there and the Stroll Warlord uh, making a go. Uh, some track kills. It's very, very low, low on life, but he still has his uh, Ages of the Immortal actually. So uh, nice Genida there on the on the chain. And you know, another t team wipe. So Dire calls GG. And, uh, and that was a very dominating game by Paradise. So congrats. And they still have their 100% uh, uh, win rate so this is paradise second win and hope to see more of them uh t today uh sorry this week so this is your final score 34 wins uh, uh 34 kills on the side of the radiant versus just nine on the dire and thank you for watching the jetto cup so thanks for watching and again you can find more about it at facebook that uh you can look for Jetocop on Facebook or friendlydota.tumblr.com. And this is Charles, your caster for tonight. Thank you for watching.